Okay. Uh, and I'm Frank from Entertainment Weekly, EW.com. Um, I guess what I want to ask uh, first about this show is, like, the previous Law and Orders have all been sort of unit-based, special victims unit, uh, et cetera. And this one's just based on Los Angeles. So I was wondering, like, what drove, uh, what went into that decision to make it based on a city rather than a unit? Well, we're actually centered around a unit, the Robbery Homicide Division. Okay. Um, and we just wanted to make it clear that this was, if we called it Law and Order Robbery Homicide Division, people might still think, oh, it's, so it's in New York. And so we wanted to make it very clear that this was a new city, a rebooting of, of the brand. And, uh, you know, as people get to know the show and they get to call it Lola, they'll get to know that this is really centered around the Robbery Homicide Division. Okay, so it isn't really about the city of Los Angeles then? Or? Well, of course, it, it takes place in L.A., uh -huh. so all the stories are about Los Angeles, right, knows, right. and uh, it's definitely about the city of Los Angeles. Uh -huh. I mean, in fact, most of the, the, most of the episodes, I don't know how, how ongoing that'll be, but are named after different sections, right? I mean, yes, different neighborhoods, so. different uh, uh, areas of L.A., uh, episodes called Silmar, El Sereno, Echo, Echo Park, Park, you know, uh -huh. so. So, you know, I mean, the, the advantage. I like how we did said Echo Park as an as echo. An echo. <laughs> there you go. Very nice. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, the, the advantage of the robbery homicide division is it covers the entire city. Uh -huh. So it's not, you know, it's not delegated to a uh, to small area. So we can go anywhere within the city and, you know, and uh, see all the dis different aspects of it. We, we talked about it at the beginning. This is place is such a tapestry of neighborhoods that it, you know, it's it, it, there. It's a little bio systems all over the place. And so um, you get a different feel in each episode for different communities that make up the fabric of Los Angeles. What is the vibe of this? This, this law and order, this Lola? Uh, the vibe. Uh, I, I would say, you know, if we had a house band, if we could have a house band to provide <laughs> the, the vibe, I think it would be the Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh -huh. you know. Uh, there's, especially, you know, as we move forward to the second and third episodes and get more away from the celebrity culture and more into the very multicultural, multi-ethnic, mosaic that, that is L.A., uh, it's, you know, it's, it visually, it's, you know, it's, it's clearly, it's a, it's a more sunlit and spacious yeah. place. It's got, you know, it's more verdant at times, you know, I mean, New York has that incredible vertical quality. This has sort of a, a linear quality. There's more space, but there's, there's, um, uh, you know, there is a, there's a youth, Sometimes to you know, I mean, I mean, between Skeet and Corey and whatever, there's there's that kind of energy that that uh, you know, with with the, um, I mean, you look around at the set a little bit and you can tell it's a different vibration. Hopefully, within the same framework, kind of, but a different vibe than you know was in uh, was in New York. I mean, you know, these for instance, these little tile columns. If you go to the real Parker Center, which was the um, the police you know, center before they built a new one, they're modeled exactly after that thing. Um, but I mean, you know, it's great here in this space. And, you know, one of the great things about being in a real building up on the 10th floor is that backdrop. And if you go and look over the edge, all you see is freeways, you know, and you see, you know, the, the quantity of cars and that, you know, and I think, you know, hopefully as, you know, we go forward that, you know, we incorporate the car as part of, you know, one of the elements of Los Angeles. I'm sure yeah. there are a million factors that go into these decisions, yeah. but are there any landmarks where you're looking forward or hoping to shoot scenes? Well, well we, uh, we, <laughs> we, we already shot one at the Encounter Restaurant. Well, we haven't shot there yet. That's, but that's we are shooting up. there. Yeah. We are shooting there. Okay. So we're going to LAX for this episode and, uh, and, and shooting inside the Encounter Restaurant uh, right there and looking out over the entire airport. So I think that's the first true landmark i mean we've been at, we like we were saying we've been out to the beaches and things right. like that um into some of the the, um, the mansions and things in beverly hills and what, what you know but um as an identifiable landmark we went to the, we saw the angelino hotel mm -hmm. uh which is the one right off the 405 the big you know old holiday inn one and then um to lax i think is another one but um you know, 
don't you know, know what I, else you have in mind. Again, it's, you know, we're not going to be celebrity of the week, and we're not going right. to be landmark of the week. And you know, I don't think you know bad guys go and you know purposely dump bodies at, <laughs> at like the Griffith ob ob Observatory. Well, I don't know if you remember, but it was an old. Do you remember the old yeah. Mad Magazine one? Oh, one yeah. where it was just a, where it was like I think it was Chris Noth and Jerry Obrock standing on top of a garbage dump, and there was the body, and and uh, Noth uh, Orbach looks at Noth and he goes, uh, "Did you?" Uh, did we find the body here? And he goes, no, we just dragged it here because the background was better. He's got the yeah. skyline yeah. behind him. So, okay. We're ready? That's it. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah,